Good evening, it's 7 p.m. on Thursday, September 19th, 2024, and I'm calling to order the Conway School Committee meeting. This meeting is recorded. First order of business is reorganization. And so I'm looking for nominees for chair. I'm going to nominate Michael or any. There's reasons that the, that the select board member might might not want to be the, the school committee chair. Just well, you were argument. chair of um, of the of the select board, and we're on the committee, so I'm not sure what the reverse means. And I've actually talked to people, and there's really no there's no issue there's no that. there's no ethical issue there's or no anything, ethical issue not at all. And um, but there is sort of um, budgetary reasons, like budget argument reasons. Um, when if, if if it's a tough budget year, mm -hmm. um, okay. but well. but if, if you still want to do it, is what I you do. Say. Yeah. Um, I have no like. There's no. There's no like. Uh, okay. other, other than the fact that there's potential budgetary. Um, um, you know, if if it's a tough budget year, yeah. and you're arguing for both budgets, um, that there's potential spillover effect. Okay. I'll but that's keep that in mind. that's the only. Well, I nominate Elaine Campbell. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Awesome. Okay. Other nominations? You nominate no. So withdraw. All right. Closing nominations. All in favor of Elaine being chair. Thank you. Aye. Awesome. All right. Yeah. All right. Now we need a vice chair. Can I have nominations? You didn't get that. Sure. No. You were? I was. Um, <coughs> Who was last year? <coughs> Michael. Oh, I, I nominate Michael. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> a a second? second? Oh, you're second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. Pleasure. Great. Pleasure. Secretary Denise is no longer with us. The secretary doesn't. Kristen keeps our minutes. Mm -hmm. Kristen keeps our minutes, but from time to time, the secretary needs to. Um, if you were going for a loan or stuff, the secretary has to affirm that the minutes are correct and that kind of stuff. So it may never be a job being done, but you need to have the position. It is a statutorily required appointment. <coughs> yes. Exactly. So can I have nominations? I'll nominate Tori to Second. Awesome. <laughs> All in favor. All in favor. There we go. You, but you got to speak up fast. Well, no, I, I mean, he said there was literally nothing to do I know, with Well, this. except... When he puts a caveat okay, out there, you know okay, it's going to happen. Fine, yeah. Fine. Yeah. If he verbalizes the caveat, it's going to happen. So the next, are the two members are voting members? So yeah, when the 38 gets together, you're talking about 38, right? Yep. So when 38 gets together, you have three voting members. Yep. It's recommended that you don't have the chair because the chair, no, you don't have your frontier representative be that because that person is going to get a vote at frontier. Okay. So, um. So last year it was Michael, myself, and Phil. So. Do we not do it that way? Usually you you you. Usually we try to keep the. So you can get more votes. Yeah, but you don't have to do it that way. Obviously, we didn't do that way in the past. All right. So Union Thirty Eight reps. I need three nominations, or give me a, give me a nomination for Union Thirty Eight reps. I'll name. I'll nominate Jared. Second. All in favor of Jared. These are actually appointed. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say are these appointed. Oh, yeah, that's what I was I gonna point ask. Him. I, was gonna ask I you appoint him as the chair. Yeah. Okay. As the chair, you appoint all of them. Okay. Phil, do you still want to do um, Frontier? Sure. Okay. And Jared, do you still want to do sure. Frontier? Okay. So. Well, Jared's the at-large person, Frontier. So are we taking away votes then from Conway? No, Conway yeah. only sends one person to the frontier, and you're the at large. But you serve. You've been you've been elected twice. So if the committee sends one person, and then there's a general election person. You're the general election person. You're general. You're the general. You're the general. So, you're the general. So, and you're the quite an election. It matters because your 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 weighted vote is different. Every not general. Uh, I'm, All right. I'm the not general. So, so you both are willingly able to do this. Yes. Great. Just Phil. Phil and Jared, oh, okay. frontier rep. So then Union 38 reps. So, uh, I'm happy to do it again. Michael, are you happy to do it again? Sure. Okay. And Phil, do you want to do it, or do you want us to put Tori on there, or what? 
I mean, I'll, you know, I'll be, I'll be at those anyway. If, 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 there, if Tori's uncertain as to her availability and, uh, or, and or willingness to go to those, it's Mostly. important. Mm -hmm. It's important that we have all the votes that we, right. that we can. So it is okay. important to go to those. All right. Well, we'll ease you in slowly, so we'll let Phil do it again. Okay. Right now. I'm happy to do okay. whatever. Right. You're good with that. Okay. Capital improvement. Phil, you've been on it for a while. Can you still do that? Capital Improvement um, Committee. I thought Jared. No, I thought Jared. Jared was Jared, Jared, Jared did it last year. I was there for the select. I'm only board. going by what it says so on the wrong. paper. What's wrong, Jared? Is it, is it different for Frontier? I think I was, I was there for the select board. So Jared, do you want to do it yeah. again? All right. And then the select board makes. So an I will appoint Jared for the Capital Improvement Committee. Collaborative representative. Denise has not here. That is about four meetings a year. They are very long meetings. They're very interesting. I know, Michael, you've done it before. They give you free lunch. They do give or you, dinner. I've done it or dinner. in the past. Is it only I, in person? Or what's that? Are you, still, are you interested in it? I can't. No. Is it in person only? I don't know how their meetings run. I would think it'd be That's hybrid with how far they are. But Either in um, Northampton or anything. Yeah. Because <laughs> I get a report from every right. single group. I can pass on to the talking about. Um report. <clears throat> Wanna give it a whirl? Uh okay. the only thing would be the schedule. I don't yeah. Because I have kid commitment, but yeah. And I, it, I could it can be as needed. Yeah. So sure. it is very interesting. Sure. Um, I like interesting, so yeah. yeah. So all right. Tori. Negotiations team. You are in a negotiating year, so we are. It's going to be. It's so it was that's Phil the and heaviest lift in it the, was Phil and myself. Phil was so you should have. I sent notices out to all the towns. The select board has to select a select board member for thirty-eight, and then you guys select somebody from the committee for thirty-eight. Last year, the last few years, like the last two cycles. You you were the school committee person and I was the select board okay. person. So do you want to switch? Do sure. You want to be? Okay. <laughs> Great. It does help to have a little history with. Uh, yes, absolutely. So, okay. All right. Sounds uh, good. I have a question on that. So Phil, you're you're frontier as well, right? Yeah. Does it make sense to do a different person, or is it, does it matter? They're different, separate negotiations. Okay. okay. One's historically more pleasant than the other. Okay. Policy Review Subcommittee Rep was Denise. Does anybody love policies? How often does that meet? That's been a very um, active thing the last year. Now. Yeah, we're, um, we have like one more section to go through, so we do virtually. We go through a section for one hour, so it's probably a couple one hour meetings virtually where we go through the handbook and make the changes. I think there's only one section left, and then if anything new comes forward that needs to be reviewed, for example, tonight's policies that we're going to go over mm -hmm. are all legal. Like, there's no need to have a group get together and not a, a legal document. Um, so, it's not going to be a heavy lift. It might be one or two meetings of an hour this year. Mm. Unless someone wants to do it, I can do it. I'm happy to appoint Jared. Mm. Excellent. Superintendency Agreement Committee. I don't even it's know what that is. It's no longer exists. Okay. Good. That's good. Sick leave bank? That's... So sick leave bank is... Approving um, people that want to tap into that? Correct. Okay. So Before. what happens if someone wants to access the sick leave bank? There's two members from here and two members from the union. They, get, they decide how I'm happy to do it again. And Michael, you were another one on there. Are you good with that? Sure. No. Okay. I think that's everything. Kristen, you got all that? Um, regional group committee I have on here. The what? Regional group committee. I don't have that. That was for the report that was concluded. That was for the, oh. the yeah, thing that they completed. Thanks, Elaine. Sure. All right, and now we have to uh, re review and approve minutes from April 30th, 2024, which seems like yesterday. <laughs> Can I have a motion, or if there are any comments or anything about them? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from April 8th, 4th, what was it? 
April 30th, 30th. 2024. Now we're near. Okay. <laughs> Can I get a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor? Awesome. Financial statements. Shelly's been waiting patiently. Uh -oh. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Um, Kristen, I'm going to dump the warrant totals and the amount in the chat for you. I, I got them off of your report. Thanks, Chef. You went muted. Yeah, you muted. You muted yourself. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yep. yep. Okay, great. Um, I did email out the financial reports. I'm going to go over a couple of account overages. Um, for the record, since April through uh, September 25th, that is the next uh, time that we run a warrant with the town, we have signed 77 warrants electronically, totaling 497000 $991.21. And the overages are minimal in Conway. A um, couple of things to note on page one, the accounting software line and the um, technology line are both over. Uh, with the accounting software, we renew that contract for our database software after the budget is created. We never have that during the budget cycle. Um, so that is an increase there district-wide. We are trying to reduce that cost by eliminating some platforms that we don't use and services that we don't use with that company. So hopefully there will be a credit there by the end of the year. Um, and the technology line we're looking at closely with IT and curriculum to make sure that everything in that account is in the right spot. That is related to software that we use in the schools for educational purposes. We have some new things this year, and then we have some other things that have fallen off. So we're looking at that account closely. Um, what I want to know is the principal's line is over budget. That's not actually an overage to Kristen's salary based on what her contract says. That's the money to offset. Can you guys hear a lot of feedback or is it just on my end? It's a little You're, feedback. A, a little glitchy. I don't know if it's my internet or not. Um, I apologize. I'm not feeling great, so that's why I stayed home, not to expose anyone. Um, so the principal's line, we were using ESSER money to help offset the budget. We decided to pay principal and secretarial wages out of it instead of paying teacher salaries. Um, and what ended up happening is we get a 9% surcharge on anyone who is a member of MTRS, which Kristen is in her position as a principal. MTRS is Mass Teacher Retirement, and because it's a federal grant, they charge us 9% if you pay anyone who is a member of MTRS. So in order to minimize that, we moved more of Kristen's salary back to the budget so that we didn't have to pay out so much of that surcharge. So it shows an overage on the budget, but there will be savings in another line. Um, so it's not actually gonna end up being a true overage in the end. Um, Summer line and the teacher's line, uh, those are actual overages. Um, the teacher's line, there was someone with a different step uh, hired mid -year, or hired over the summer uh, than we had budgeted. And then summer programs cost more to have all of the staff in place. So those are actual overages. Minor amounts, I think it's about 3,000 total. So we should be able to make those up elsewhere. The big one that we need to pay attention to is the building heat. Well, Oil, we locked in a lower rate for our oil costs than last year. However, based on the amount of oil that we locked into, 15,000 gallons, which is about what we need to use annually, we are going to be over budget. That is a significant number. Um, there is some ways that we can try to work with the oil delivery company to push some of that off until the next year if we don't need all of that oil. So that cost might come down. But we may really be looking to recoup about $20,000 savings from other lines because of the um, cost of people. I'm watching that really closely. Is there a, like if rates go down, like gas has it's gone down now, do you get a... So we have to lock in annually for a rate. Um, I did that this year over the summer because our price came down about 90 cents a gallon compared to last year. If you don't lock into the rate, then you pay based on the market and you really just never know how that's going to go. 
Um, so we are paying less per gallon than we have in the past, but it's still, you know, $3 instead of three ninety dollars a gallon. Yeah. Um, and, and that'll be our rate through next year when we renew over the summer again. Okay. Shelly, did they end up, um, I forgot where we left off on this, because <clears throat> it's been months since we talked about it, but will they deliver to another site in town? Um, I never asked about that because we deferred that last delivery until July, so we didn't need to do it, but we can definitely ask that of the company. Okay. Uh, Shelly, what's the basis for the budget number? So you said it, we're down 90 cents to last year, but we're, so what's the basis for the budget? Um, it's based on the um, price index for inflation and what the market is. So we work with the collaborative, they lock in rates with various vendors, and then they watch literally daily what the market looks like, but the school district has to choose when they want to lock in a rate. So. You know, I watched prices for a while and tried to settle on something that was saving us some kind of money. Um, I could send you more information, Jared. I could send it to the full committee on what the collaborative provides us to help with those bid services. We don't put it out to bid ourselves. Um, FERCOG in, in Franklin County actually does a similar process. We just happen to work with the collaborative. It's a larger group consortium, so we get part of a larger bid to get the lowest price we can. <coughs> Is the, the building's HVAC now is automated so that Friday evenings the heat goes down and no? It requires a human being to do that still? So <coughs> I... Um, I met with the energy, or, or they're not calling themselves the energy committee, they're calling them the sustainability committee, maybe? Right, yes. right. Um, so at the, in the spring of, late spring of last year, I did a tour of the building and talked about going after a grant for a BMS system, building yeah. management system, which can tie in our mini splits to our heating and be able to kind of work it all off. Um, and that's kind of where it ended. I understand they had turnover on that committee, and so I'm going to have to kind of re- go there again, it's on my list of things to do, to start having that conversation. Deerfield did get a grant to do that for $180,000. Wow, did and it cost so, that much? Yeah, I mean, it's a big building. Wow. So yeah, I mean, they gotta wire every single one. It's probably $1,000 a mini split to wow. wire it in, and then you gotta buy a new programming thing, and then you gotta wire it into oh the boiler. So um, they had some other energy incentive stuff in that as well. Yeah. But that's, that's one of those things that you could project out in advance and see when it pays for itself and all it's that's that's yeah I mean it, we it is human based here so um, you can run the AC and the heat at the same time you know what I mean that's I not bet something, we do and, and, I mean <laughs> it, I mean it takes some I mean it takes some you know bad management to do that but um, you know we also are looking at our boilers here are so we're going to talk about capital at the October meeting but. <laughs> Um, you know, our boilers are getting into life here, too. So talking about what are we moving to next, and does the Energy Committee want a voice in that? Because I've already experienced this in other buildings, and we're going to look at budget, you know, what we can afford versus if someone wants to really go out and find, you know, has the resource to go out and find. Aren't the boilers why we originally started the... That is correct. Yeah. Because they were they're going to be... Low those many years forever. ago. Long time ago. <laughs> We started up. Our, our, our goal for our, for our um, capital fund for this school was always the cost of replacing both boilers, boilers. at yep. once so that we wouldn't have to shut down school in the middle of a cold winter, et cetera, et cetera. So I can pull some additional information together for the committee on the collaborative and how they lock in with, with the bid and what the rate actually is. I can pull that off of our invoice. I don't have it in front of me at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's definitely down from last year. And this is one of those things that's hard to make a decision. Um, you know, you never know what the market's going to do. Some years, I have until October 31st to lock us in on any given year, and sometimes I've waited till October 30th. Other times, like this year, I decided to do it over the summer. So, you know, it's part of a gamble that it, we just don't know where things are going to land. But I can send you some more info. Sure. And that's the Southern Collaborative, right? That's not, that's not the Hampshire Collaborative, right? Isn't that the Southern Berkshire Collaborative? No. That's not the Hampshire Collaborative, is it? 
It doesn't. No, no, no. It's lower pioneer valley. Lower pioneer valley. So it's even a bigger scope. They do that, and they do up here. I'm just kind of saying, like, they're working with not just a dozen schools, but yeah. lots. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. That'd be great. Um, I, the other thing. Oh, go well, ahead. I was just gonna say, I, I, maybe, I, maybe I'm not hearing the answer. I don't know. What? How did we determine our budget? Not, not what we locked in at, and what our actual oh, oh, cost. Oh, the budget. Was I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. Okay. I misunderstood you. Um, so we have historically looked at our consumption per year, and you have to lock into a certain number of gallons. So the budget hasn't changed hugely for this. I may have increased it a little bit this past year, um, but it's it might have been the same for quite some time. Um, but it's based on our consumption. So uh, years back, you know, maybe when I first started, I think six years ago, we were only locking in to 10 or 11,000 gallons. Um, now we're up to 15 because that's more our actual consumption because what happens when you use all of your gallons, then you go to market price and you don't always know what the market's going to be like at that time. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Yeah, it's really become more of a challenge since COVID when, when prices really started skyrocketing when um, inflation. But I'll get some info together and send it to you guys so that we can talk a little bit further about well, it. It's, it's also hard. We haven't had a really cold winter in a while. If you suddenly get a really cold winter, your costs are going to go through the roof. <clears throat> but we haven't had one of those not cold enough <coughs> in a while now. Well, in COVID, we had windows open, too. <laughs> That's it true. was a factor, and we opened yeah. up all the dampers completely right. to pump as much fresh air in as possible as well. That's um, true. I so mean, it's also terrible. interesting with the mini splits now, you'll see in a few minutes with the capital, we have every single classroom. So it'll be interesting how if we can shut down the boilers earlier um, and just use electric heat mm -hmm. on those just chilly mornings that it's going to be a 70 degree day, but it starts right. in the 40s, you know. Right. Um, but that's really where you need a BMS system, or else you have to go to every single room and set that right. before the kids come in. Right. <clears throat> so uh, the positive news, and I'm going to switch to revolving fund discussion quickly. Unless does anyone have questions about the expense reports that I sent out before I talk about revolving funds? No. No. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to move on to revolving funds because the positive side of this, if we do have a significant overage in any of our accounts. Um, I know we're talking particularly about HEAP right now, but if we did have an issue, Conway's Grammar School School Choice Fund um, is currently in a really healthy position. Can everyone see that? Can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. yes. See it. We see it, we hear you. Perfect. It's really um, laggy on my end, so I'm not sure if you can hear me or not, but I'll just keep talking and <laughs> Hopefully you hear what's happening. Um, so the school choice fund you can see here is in a really healthy position. Uh, we did receive more significant revenue last year than we had anticipated due to special education increment claims. So that means when we have a student that comes in from another school district via school choice, if they end up needing special education services, our special education director can put in most of the time dollar for dollar, especially if it's a one-to-one -one IA. So our revenue was way up last year. I've dropped that number back down in this projection because we don't want to count on that. You know, I don't know who the student is. I'm not even sure if they aged out of the program or not, um, or out of the school. So I always drop down to be more conservative you can see that our expenses are exceeding our revenue, so we have to be careful there going budget year to budget year. But we currently have over 500,000 in the budget, so or in the school choice revolving fund, I'm sorry. So um, we're in a good spot that if we do need to cover overage for heat or any other expense account, we can tap into school choice revolving if we need to. So that's a positive note there. Um, our other funds, I'm not going to talk about too significantly because we are also showing really healthy and early childhood wings revolving and school lunch. Um, you can see all of those with the exception of, <coughs> excuse me, um, wings balance has come down over the last few years because we have spent some extra money on consulting services. But otherwise, 
revenue coming in is covering expenses going out and we're still in a really good spot. So I'm happy with where things are currently. Um, for lunch, the one thing that I do want to note is that our food service director, Patrick McCarthy, is doing um, an overview of all of the kitchens district-wide to see if there is any equipment that can be purchased or small wares, you know, bowls, updating utensils, trays, things like that, um, because we are carrying a pretty hefty balance in school lunch, and that's not typical. I, you, some of you are veterans, and you know school lunch in Conway has run at a deficit for a long time. Um, but with COVID savings and lunch being fully reimbursable as well as breakfast, we've been able to pick up that surplus. So we're in a really positive spot right now, despite maybe having some challenges with our food I assume our new stove is up and running well. Okay, good. That was a little bit of a yeah. So to, uh, with yeah. the school choice, we were we were concerned coming into this school year that we were losing so many school choice with the graduating sixth sixth grade class that we the numbers were not going to be able to be made up. Mm -hmm. How'd that work out? Um. Kristen does a really good job of, of backfilling the school spots. choice spot. Yeah. So we may have had a large sixth grade class last year, but um, I think that you've more than filled yeah, the exiting fill. students. It doesn't have last year's did. stats on it. Um, yeah, we, tried, we try to fill student for student is what we do. Um, the hardest spot is kindergarten where we usually pick up quite a few school choice students. This year, we only took three school choice students who were in, who were in our preschool for two or three years who have siblings here because we have a class of 25. Mm -hmm. So, fabulous. but we were able to pick up some. What? Well, that's fabulous. That's, I mean, I know, like, you know, it's a trade-off, but I feel like potentially the school amount of school choice was almost unsustainable. Yes. And, and yes. The population of the school needed those school yeah. choice students to make it. I think we're at 152 students now. I keep bragging about that, mm -hmm. by the way. <laughs> you looking for that Try report? Trying to look back in history. Yeah, I'm trying to get lost. No, I have the current one. The current one doesn't show. We usually make it show. I have um, the monthly enrollment. None pre-K. School yeah, choice 5K. Seven, first grade, five, second grade, ten, third grade, eight, fourth grade, nine, fifth grade, seven, sixth grade, 51 total school choice. And the reason school choice works here is because you don't have to hire right. another teacher because of school right. choice. Now, our kindergarten bubble of 25, it's not the school choice. It would be residents that would. Right. Darius, I found June's report on enrollment, um, and I, it shows I that there was 56. So we're down five. Yep. Choice students, so we are down a few. Mm -hmm. But that's a lot better than what we yes. hear. So yes. well done. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the other thing, you know, we're always told for years and years, oh, don't, don't count on school choice revenue. Uh, in terms of ordinary expenses, etc., that it's unreliable from year to year. But at what point does a successful track record of year after year after year lend itself to? thinking differently about that. I don't know. And we turn, we had a turn away in like nine kindergartners. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. From all over really so. I don't have anything further, Elaine, unless the committee has questions for me. Any more? Nope. Thanks, Shelley. Hope you feel better soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. Um alrighty. Thanks everybody. Uh, principal's report. Kristen sent it to us ahead of time, and looks like there's a lot of fun things going on. But I always have the fun. The fun <laughs> Give us the highlights. Like. You certainly do. So yeah, there's the highlights, of course. But I always like to show you some data, what's going on in terms of the learning. And um, we just finished our round of dibbles. Now we're not supposed to really do kindergarten until November and report on it, but we we really are committed to jumping in right away and. Help, helping with interventions right away. So I'm not going to um, be overly concerned about that kindergarten number. Some students just turned five, some are, you know, mid-five. Mm -hmm. But if you could, if you look, um, the students that, and this is just one little assessment that is supposed to determine success for reading help determine. 
we're doing the knee one now. I'll have those for next meeting, um, which is a definitely a stealthy test. Um, but the the trend is very very positive with our new UFly program, which is a very specific pro, uh, phonics program. So currently, the first graders we have seventy percent at or above where they should be right now. That's compared to last year. I should have put that down at about. Um, 59 percent. Wow, that's and that's a big one jump. year with UFly. So they had one year with in kindergarten with UFly, and now they're coming into first grade. And then you can see second grade had it for one year. They just had it in first grade, and that's 65 percent. Third grade had it for one year. Mm -hmm. Fourth grade maybe four students, and fifth grade. So it's gonna it's gonna take a while for it to catch up. But this is something that I want to watch to make sure that that's what's happening that we're catching up. Um, because right now the fifth and sixth grade are sort of in this position where they were taught one specific way and now we're moving to a different way. We're really trying to blend that a little better than last year because last year some of the kids were feeling really overwhelmed about that. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you know, we've always had uh, great numbers with students going on as readers and loving reader reading and. That's our goal, and so that fifth and sixth grade, we're being very careful to sort of blend the two and not them let them lose their love for reading. Summer program, again, huge success. I mean, just a huge success. And I know you've heard this story before, some of you, but when I first came on, we had three students who went to Deerfield for program. <coughs> and then you approved the summer program here, and now we're up to 34, 32 kids. And That's the summer an amazing attendance. And the summer slides, we're not seeing them at yeah. all for, like, the fourth year in the world, which is great. Oh, and you make it fun. Yeah, they, they're learning and they mm -hmm. don't, yeah, yeah. And the, and the attendance is great, which I attribute to the staff, because mm -hmm. who wants to come to school in the summer? Mm -hmm. And then just happenings and our instructional leadership team. We started in the summer and we started planning interventions, so our intervention started like the fifth day of school, which is great. And what we're doing is we're taking students who are, and so you, you it's kind of, red, yellow, green in many of the assessments. So we're taking the high yellows, and Mary Decision actually is working as an interventionist right now. She's taking the high yellows and just moving them along, and a lot of them have already bumped up to green, and then we'll go to the next level. So that's sort of our master plan of, of getting um, kids where they need to be. Excited about the year. So your committee is almost every primary <laughs> teacher. Yeah, and and You're missing one grade, maybe. Well, because six. you're missing six. The reason is third and six because we haven't opened up to other members. If we had, they'd all be on. Oh, okay. Which is great. I mean, okay. That's a that's that's just it. Really is really telling that they yeah. want to be yeah, on that committee. That's, great. Yeah. that's cool. Do I have any questions? That's awesome. Thank you. Exciting. All right, on to public comment. See the crowds out there, Tori? <laughs> I see them. They're commenting. Uh, nobody on video that wants to comment? Okay. Unfinished business. We have none because we're so efficient. And we're on to new business. <clears throat> Summer repairs, renovations. All right, so what was going on down there in Deerfield? It was right, still like torn up in the yeah, school. Yeah, we there. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so um, Bill and Jerry hear this again. But um, we get a summer update from all the capital projects across the, the districts, and then we'll go into Conway's a little bit more depth. And I'm going to go quickly because it's also, I've done it many times. If I go too quickly, just slow me down. Um, I mean, the floors look great as usual, Kristen. Mm -hmm. The tile, the rugs, yeah, the, it's yeah. just like shiny. Yeah, yeah, the gym great. floor looked good. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, it did. looked great. So these are stuff that fell outside of the general cleaning. And as you know, we uh, put a new video surveillance system in mm -hmm. and, and how we paid for it. Um, and uh, there we go. And some, of the, some of the cameras. Excellent. We put a new phone system in. Replace 25 of the phones and get everything all up to where they should be. That was so overdue. That's that's a great picture right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, we got the mini split pump installation um, and have completed the building outside of the gym. 
People want to sweat in the gym anyway, don't they? No. <laughs> no, they want to have a town meeting, but... Uh, <laughs> we're, the, we're the first of the four elementary schools to be to have every classroom um, air conditioning? The Deerfield Cotton Room. Because they did double this year because they, they took the money in the same year, took the rebate in the same year, and applied it in the same year. We'll go with the tie. So, yeah, we're so we're tied. And yeah. then their entryway kind of puts them behind them. Think that yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Have you seen their entryway? Because that's going to be on your capital list for next year. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the obviously the big you know the big rooms there in their building. We'll see. Um, so we got that done. Uh, yeah, those are all you have for major ones here. And I'll go through the other those buildings. Those were overdue and great. That looks really nice. So the front entryway is. Um, I don't have the updated pictures. They did all the plantings this week and such, and they have a little grand opening thing tomorrow. But um, that was an interesting, um, interesting project. They had some ups and downs. In it. Um, they did a. They did. This is Deerfield again. They finished up their main pump installation, so they're fully um, done there. Um, they put a new phone system just like you, but just more phones, so it costs a little bit more. Uh, they did a side entrance as well. They redid the, all the, uh, they did concrete on that, um, and did a nice job on their side for the one of their drop offs. They installed using ESSER money more video surveillance around their building, so now they're kind of 100% um, coverage. They do, they're doing classrooms a couple at a time or three at a time, just similar to how we used to be doing it here, um, and they have um, nine more to go. Over at the high school, little high school, they did phase one of the roof project. That went um, extraordinarily smooth, so we were happy about that. There was um, you know, eleven thousand dollars in change orders, but that's not bad for a half a million, almost half a million dollar project where they found more wet insulation. Replaced the bleacher set. They got their walk-in replaced. That was supposed to be done the year prior, but there was um, delays in. The order and installation has to be done when it's not school's not in session because obviously they shut that thing down. So they got that done. They did some painting with some that required high lift equipment and such. It's not really a main, it was hot. It was estimated much higher, came in though. Um, they did tree removal. If you've been down there, they took a lot, a lot of trees and, and such. Sunderland, they also have just started. They're just uh, in their first year to getting classrooms. They got nine of them done. Um, they have 18 total, so they're halfway there. That's a lot to do in a year. Yeah, it is. Great. Um, they did electrical updates. This is also, as you know, it's ARPA money. So ARPA money covered other capital projects, so you were able to get some other things through town warrant. And don't the rebates go back? Wasn't there some mess up with the rebates? They go back to the town. They go back to the town. And so the rebates of this probably already went back to the town. Okay. Your completion here, which is... Shelly, did they go back to the town? Have they, have they got the rebates yet? Uh, no, no one has received the rebates. They are forthcoming, but they will be returned to the town. Yeah. This is about 40%, which is good to know because we'll talk about the pump system in a second. Yeah. Um, they have this room band project they've probably been seeing for years. They finally finished the, the five phases of it um, for the rotting of the sill around the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't build the building out of wood. Um, they did a place, window replacement project with ARBA money. Um, Ended up hitting an asbestos problem over the summer oh, and go geez. back to the town for about $60,000. Um, and so they were able to help us out there. So That's one well. of the newer buildings, isn't it? They're all around the same age. They're all oh, around they are? 192, yeah, I wouldn't think you'd use asbestos. Mm -hmm. Wheatley, you know, did the same electrical upgrades. They're doing the mini pump um, installation. They had two sections, so they have phase one of six units and they need six minutes more to do. Their building's a little bit smaller than, than here. They clean their ductwork with ARPA money. They're doing their bathrooms over, um, replacing old tile with the. the, the um, it's not linoleum, but somewhere it's easier to clean, keeps yeah. clean better. And they did some right. floor replacement with their maintenance budget. Um, and they had to replace some of their exterior door jams that are rusting um, at the base. Bad enough where like, little critters are getting in. So, um, they have a fire suppression system that an emergency repair over the summer had to go to the town to get ARPA money to get funding to pay for it because they didn't have enough money 
in their reserves. Where you guys have that, they don't have that emergency capital reserve. Mm -hmm. Well, you still have to go to town for it, but um, uh, they have a dry system that had some leaks. So, anyway, um, that is the overview of the capital. As I said, we're going a little quicker than usual. Um, the one thing that's not on there is that you guys have a, it's because this happened in the last week, um, your um, heat. We have pumps that pump the hot water from the boilers to the systems. You have two of them, one and a backup. One of them went down, and there's no parts to repair it. The second one is leaking. So um, I talked with your uh, town administrator about you know getting either fall. You, know, you probably can explain more than I do. What ended up happening is basically you're going to have a fall town meeting. You know we need to have either access to the our capital reserve fund or um, go to the town directly. Mm -hmm. um, we deemed it an emergency because that thing is going to break when there's a higher demand on it, which will be when it's too cold, and this is an emergency site for the town. So if your emergency site can't stay warm for the town, so... That's a problem, yep. I believe you guys just took action on it, right? We did, yeah. So um, you, you took it from... Where did you take it I from? I can't remember. Anyways, the town's coming forward with the money. I think Veronique said that there was an emergency reserve fund that they yeah. could tap into without having to have town approval at town so warrant. I think it's up to forty thousand, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. This was only this was we rounded up to eighteen. It'll come in yeah. lower than that. Um, so we'll replace the one, and then we're gonna have to go probably on our next capital thing to replace the other. But the other one's still working, and a leak in a boiler room is not the end of the world. But it just is a sign that there might be further problems. With oh that. yeah. So. Um, those pumps also will work when we go to replace the boiler with if we're doing we're not going to change a hot water system so right. um, so they will be useful to whatever boiler not system gonna be it's the same thing frontier is going to have to change theirs out even though they just did their boilers you know, the pumps are a separate system um, that adds on so so yeah. it's not a waste of money you know, knowing that the boilers are in the are in our scope work excellent and we'll talk about capital at the ne it's on the next meeting agenda. So October, we'll come in with our usual list and start talking about the different, yeah. what our priorities are, costs, and then uh, what we, and then start having conversation with the town about what we can do. Excellent. All very good. Keep our buildings up to date and looking good. So super important. Um, all of them. Uh, handbook revised. Handbooks revised approval. We need to vote for that. Yep, so I did send it out to you. I did send you the PDF version that had everything highlighted that was changed. Um, the actual version online, it's your handbooks online. Everything's hyperlinked, so if you go to the table of contents and you said, I want to look up what the bullying policy is, it's going to take you right there. And then even in there, it's going to have hyperlinks to all the forms and that kind of stuff. That's awesome. Um, it's really lengthy. We're trying to um, get rid of each individual elementary school having a different handbook and at least have core values of each handbook. You're going to have some things like drop off and pick up as different in each school, but really limiting the number of total things that are different in each handbook so that those sections um, will even shrink even more in following years. Right. Um, I was zealous, overzealous in my timeline, and I thought I would have this done in mid-July so the principals could go through it, and then we would condense it further, but I didn't get it until the end of August. and So it was quick. they had to quickly go through and make adjustments in it. But, um, there has already been edits to what you got. Most it was not content-wise. It was you know different people have changed positions or numbers or extensions, that kind of stuff. or even your names. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion to approve the new handbook, the revised handbook. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for your work on that. It does make sense to have us all aligned as much as I mean a lot of the handbooks were was the same thing and they just said it differently yes you know what I mean and just having right. common language and we have the same values so right. um, and uh, totally makes sense yep. and then we have the first reading mm -hmm. of homeschooling uh, policy IHBG so um, this was discussed in the subcommittee meeting but then uh, we kind of put it in the parking lot I'm bringing it forward because I'm seeing um, you know, concerns right now. The two things that are be cha being changed out, um, you know, homeschooling students can, with approval of the principal, utilize library and guidance services and testing services. However, 
and they have access to special education per law. Um, but um, currently, they can access after school activities, curricular or extracurricular, um, with approval by the superintendent. And I want to change that to that they are not allowed to go and you do extracurricular activities. It also says that they can either be awarded a high school diploma um, if they've completed the necessary things, standards for graduation from Frontier. Um, th that hasn't happened, but I don't want this, again, this is one of those policies that really affects the secondary more than the elementary. Um, and I don't think you've had many homeschooling accessing you know, resources here outside of special education. Um, but I think it, when we have, um, it, and really where it hits is probably athletics and then also the drama program. Um, if you have people who don't, um, students who are not enrolled are not having to do the same academic, the same academic rigor or demands um, from daily attendance to, we saw that with some of the teams where we had very few, one or two, but um, homeschooling students, you know, on a team, they have a late game, I get to sleep in because I don't have to be at school by a certain time in order to be in tens for the day in order to go to practice. Um, you know, also we're doing a lot of work about leadership training and values and that kind of stuff. They're not a part of that because it happens during the school day. It's just I think it's, you know, um, you know, and it can be abused as well as, you know, and that's my concern. And so in having me make that decision is, is, our, is arbitrary, I think. I think. And so I think it needs to be removed. I think in homeschooling requirements, while they send submissions to me to be reviewed, the law says they, uh, sometimes they just print out the template from the law, which is just very basic. They have to show me that they're able to teach the subject and that they're going to teach all subjects in a number of hours and then give me a report that they did that. Um, to what depth? Some do a great job. You know, some are doing a fantastic job. I remember job, Marty so. doing home visits. Yeah, it's a little bit of that. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> yeah, no, she um, was like on it. I remember, yeah. Um, some do an excellent job, and some, I, you know, I'm like, you got the minimum standard, but that's your right as a U.S. citizen to do it that way. You can homeschool your kids. So I thought it was the law that they had access to teams and extracurricular and whatever. It can be made by the school. Really? Yep. So, I, you know, I, I, I remember um, I know, 10, 12 or more years ago, there was a small group in Conway that I think one of the child, one of the kids, and they're long since graduated from everything, I think they graduated from college, but one of the kids had acute anxiety, something or other, and then that kid's friends, all, they got together and there's four or five of them, and they sort of did their own school. They met. They did. They they were there every morning. There are, they, there's there's strong there's and, strong homeschooling and, groups and that, that kind of stuff. I'm not I'm not, I'm not right? saying that this one's going bad. I'm talking about their homeschooling involvement and right. Know, and, but and whatever. but but if if a lot of those concerns are the reasons why they shouldn't be eligible for if they're sort of being met in a program, don't I mean. Uh, and it's verifiable. They can do a, if they, they can find other activities in the community, they can join Jaduke for theater, they can join um, AU teams for sports, you know, there are other things they can do, but um, is it fair, you know, that level of scrutiny, they would have to, I mean, it'd be a, a heck of a policy to put together where I would have to get to examine and have exam scores and, you know, that kind of stuff and guarantee that they had school on days of athletics and and extra other extracurriculars, you know that kind of thing. It's uh, that's where I think it's it, it's unfair to the students who are enrolled in public education. Um, you know, right now, the rule of a sports team is that the principal has to have the right in order for you to be considered um, within that school. The principal has to have the right to suspend you, right? So that's one of those things where they talk about within the eligibility of. That's why middle schoolers can be can be on the high school teams, right? Because the principal has can, but somehow that rule from MIA doesn't slip to homeschool students. So, I mean, it's, it, there's different perspective on it, but this is. But they're also important. taxpayers, so all those other things they can participate in, they have to pay extra money to do those things. Correct. But they choose to they choose not public. to take advantage of the program of studies that we put together, that I think is a full encompassing. So again, my perspective, full. I think it's a full package, and 
you can't pick and choose. I want to take math, but not social studies. Mm -hmm. When you enroll, and if you want to be enrolled in, and we're asking so much more. But like right now, we're doing at Frontier Captains Trainings. Um, that's taking up, you know, the students a lot of time and whatever to be create greater leadership and that kind of stuff. If they're not enrolled in the school, they're not taking part in those kind of trainings. You know what I mean? And and all the other things that we promote within our school. Um, I mean, I'm actually kind of playing devil's advocate because yeah. as a clinical psychologist, I've always been very skeptical of homeschooling because I've seen it as parents who have no control over their kids, letting their kids just stay home and do nothing, um, or kids that do have mental health issues that they're not going to the system to get them on the appropriate IEPs or programs or whatever, and so the kids just languish at home, you know, and so that's been my clinical experience, so I've thought homeschooling should be much more regulated and people on top of it, except for you have enough to do with who you have in your building than to go chasing people who are, it's kind of like, oh, well, I guess it's on you if you're choosing to do that. But, you know, this is this is an interesting change, and I wonder, if you, I'm sure you've run it by legal. Mm -hmm. It's other districts are doing it. So this was still okay. borrowed language from other districts. That's, if you go to the MASC site, you can go and search and see who's doing it as okay. well. Okay. Well, we have time to think it over because yep. we only have to, this is our first reading, so we'll vote the next mm -hmm. meeting. Um, and then we have policies. So the next set of policies, these, all these A, 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 C, A, 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 C, A, B, these are all in, um, they came from MASC, they went to your law firm at Dupree. Um, it made recommendations to change policy. This is all, all in regards to um, staying current with the new Title IX that came out in July, mm -hmm. in August. Um, the second one, however, is ACAA, is the, um, came from your um, anti-racism and equity committee about having more clear language around um, uh, gender identity policy within the school and what we do around that and how we support those students and recognize those students. So um, there's language in there you can kind of read through about. So there's very, it's very clear that the old policy just said that we won't discriminate against. Um, we want to take it further and spell it out it's great. It is great. They really did a great job. It's, they, hats off to them. Yeah, it's really well done. Um, so that's the first reading also on these policies. Yep. Um, uh, so we will vote next time. Um, e, presentation of the designing of the next strategic plan. So um, this is in the hyperlink of my principal's report. So you have that. Um, What's going on here? Oh. Your link's not so hyper? Yeah, exactly. So um, so basically, you know, our strategic plan, the first one, the first design from scratch happened when I did my injury plan seven years ago. In the middle of that, COVID hit, so we kind of put the whole plan on hold because we weren't really making progress because we were just putting out fires for two years. That was years. our trial for you to see exactly. if I liked you or not. Exactly. <laughs> put you through. And Shelly, right? It was Shelly's COVID, first, yeah. right? Both first year, you, exactly. Just, yeah. um, see if he can take the heat. And um, so what I want to do now is developing the next five-year strategic plan is to get feedback from the community about how we're doing in certain areas and what they would like to see as an image of their graduate um, and image of their student. Um, like what's both, called, what's both called both portrait of the students, sir. So in my little thing here, we are, we're going to do a survey. Um, that we're kind of together. We're stealing a lot from other districts, too, because a lot, every district does this. In, a, in different districts, well, you can hire consultants to do this for you. They, it can get very elaborate in how you do it. I'm trying to make it get very expensive. Well, I'm trying to do a balanced approach. Right now, the leader, the team that is leading this is uh, Laura Ramsey, Sarah Mitchell, and myself, the, you know, the three um, central office administrators that, that do this kind of thing. And then the greater team is the principals involved as well. So during the summer, we met as, with the principal team, the administrative team, and talked about the strategic plan. And we're like, you know what, we have our main pillars of where we're going with curriculum, um, a lot of social emotional stuff and that kind of thing, but we really haven't reached out to the community and brought back in. So we want to do that this year. So um, starting with a survey, and then we'll do copies and conversations at each of the schools, including one that's virtual at night uh, between, October and between October and November. 
and then we'll How develop about some senior centers. We could coffees at senior centers. I just think it'd be interesting to hear from the older population what they think about our, you know. Yep. Youngins coming up and the education they're getting. Except Conway's not part of the South County Senior Center. Right, but they have their own senior group things. You could go on a walk with the seniors, Darius, because yeah. they they walk. So mm -hmm. you could go right. go get go get some walk exercise and, and walk so with them. Was the last one? Was the first one that you did? Was that did that prove to be a useful thing? Yeah. So what happens is the in in we I just you know as I know you guys know I left a meeting at five where we talked about this as well, but. In that we did backwards design as well. You know what I mean? So we said, oh, you know what? We need to work on, you know, uh, we need to work on like uh, regulating behavior in the classroom. You know, we like second step. You know, uh, we need to work on that. So we put that back into the plan with deadlines and whatnot. So sometimes things come out of the leadership teams of each school and gets kind of reversed. We call it, you know, backwards design. Right. So you know, that last plan was able to go for seven years because we kept on updating it with what we were working on, that kind of thing. But you want to have this overarching plan, and then from that you build your school improvement plans um, and, and direction where we're going on each thing. You, know? right. you want to look at population projections yeah. and all of those kind of and things. It's good to get the community feedback. I mean, realistically, right. I mean, the, the skeleton of this plan is is already there. Like right. you, you have your general bones of every plan, right. of every school district. And if you go online, look at a school district plans, you could go, "Wow, that looks good." That's probably what ours is going to look like. Right. But you have to go through the process of getting people's ideas. And if we find any, you know, spots we weren't thinking of, blind spots that, um, you know, we, that we just don't went know. through a year of strategic planning at work and all these focus groups and talking to staff and this or that. Then it comes out to like a five-page document, and you're just like. Seriously, like we really? worked so hard on this, like but you also this, want it, it. You also want it simple, though. You do, oh, you want, do to want to get it simple. down to something yeah. that's manageable. But you're just like, we did all this work, and we have five pages of things that you probably could have assumed were you'll starting. Do, but we did years, really work hard at it. Yeah, that is true, yeah. right? You get a new if you have a, if, in so right, you get a new superintendent right. come in. The new superintendent's going to have an entry plan, right? And then you know what I mean, right? It, Person, it, it makes exactly. it there. Yeah. So yeah. In, the, in the municipal context, we did these master plans, but they ended up being master paperweights and master door openings <laughs> because right. because you know your your revenue from year to year is so uncertain, right? That it just what plan, what's you know yeah, they're they're strictly aspirational things. Right. And the amount of blood spilled over them was just completely not worth it. Right. Nor the paper that was printed. And on. so that, and that's why in, within this, I think it's very controlled. As you can see, like we're reaching out to the community in a couple different ways, but it's not over the top. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, 20 evening groups and trying to. Right. And then also breaking the group, the community down to different groups and then having separate, separate meetings on them. You can get very elaborate um, mm -hmm. of that kind of thing. And I think. Based on some of what you're saying there is like, don't make the process bigger than what your outcome is. Right. And so I'm trying to, that's within the balance. And this is just a plan in the sense of like, if people have, you know, if we have to pivot on this or if we get other ideas or that kind of thing, we're going to, we're going to adjust it. Right. And the same thing with strategic plan. We're a small enough district is after we write it, we say, you know what, we're going to change that the following year. We want to add something. We just, right. we just add it. Right. right. You know, there's no one. Right. Um, it's very different than those huge districts that have to have that. So anyways, um, we develop it. Then we have a writing team. We do a SWOT analysis in early spring, which basically kind of you try to self tear it apart. We get school councils and teacher groups looking at it as well, and then at the joint meeting, we hope to come back and get a final presentation and final feedback to create a document for next year. Right. And so the school improvement plans will run off of um, the old strategic plan, and which mm -hmm. there's enough there to run off mm -hmm. of, um, and stuff that we're already knee deep in from new curriculum to awesome. um, all the different other stuff there. Mm -hmm. All right. Exciting. I know it's a lot of work, but it's good. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions about that? Mm -hmm. All right. Reports. Uh, I do not have a report. The collaborative does not have a report. And we just got the superintendent's report. So we are done with reports. Anything else? Second. All in favor? Hi. Go Patriots! Yay. We're gonna make kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. I gotta go get two girls from basketball. <laughs>